Uh, on the topic of, of crime, but more specifically law enforcement and the Syracuse Police Department, um, it's been well documented, uh, the conversations that we've been having as a community um, and, and also specifically between the administration and a number of different um, community organizations, protest groups, individual protesters about the issue of police reform. Um, I've said from, uh, from day one that when, when I walked into City Hall, when Deputy Mayor Owens walked into City Hall, uh, police accountability, police community relations uh, was among our very top priorities and we have worked every day to make improvements uh, over the past two and a half plus years. Uh, from the time Chief Buckner came into office, um, a little over a year and a half ago, um, we have uh, doubled down on our efforts and made significant progress that we stand by uh, and, and feel very good about. But one thing that we have, uh, among many things, that uh, we agree with the, um, with the different organizations and the protest groups out there is that more needs to be done. And we have an opportunity to accelerate that progress and we welcome that opportunity and that's exactly what we're doing. And that was, uh, I think, reflected in the response that we provided uh, yesterday uh, to the nine demands, uh, or um, yeah, from the nine demands uh, on behalf of the, the, the various protest groups. Um, Deputy Mayor Owens put a ton of time into that document, um, working with Chief Buckner, myself, and our teams. And uh, again, it's a, it's a new way to ensure accountability. It's one thing to say you're going to do something. The next level of accountability is to say when you're going to do it. And we did that. Uh, and uh, again, um, I'm proud of our work. Uh, we, we know we have a lot more to do, uh, but I'm going to turn it over to Deputy Mayor Owens to talk uh, about that document that we produced yesterday and uh, a little bit of more detail around it. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the Mayor has, has really uh, spoken to many of the points uh, uh, for Syracuse police reform and, and my position to continue to move it forward. Um, uh, a couple weeks ago, we spoke to you about um, the executive order that was presented by the mayor. We have an internal group to keep those to the point that the mayor is making. It's one thing to lay it out, put it on paper. It's another thing to make sure that we attach processes and timelines to those items. That's um, um, my task to keep us on track when it comes to the executive order. What we were on task to do um, um, as a commitment to the meeting that we had on July 2nd uh, here in the chambers was to provide feedback to the nine demands that were presented to us by the People's Agenda for Police Reform. We released that yesterday uh, and have addressed each one of those demands in that document that has also been made public. Uh, I got my notes on my phone, sorry. So, um, we do. As the mayor said, it is an urgent priority. We're addressing demands of police reform made by the coalition. And uh, we have presented a timeline that addresses these issues that some uh, that have either been completed, we will get done between 30 days or within up to um, six months. So we have a time frame that um, of all those nine demands, uh, all but one um, will from where we stand, be able to be addressed and a process initiated during 2020, which I think um, I'm proud of our commitment to doing that. Um, we've heard directly from individuals in this community that um, we need to do something, it needs to be done quickly, but we also want to do it efficiently and, and accurately. Um, so among those uh, responses was legislation for the right to know. In that document, the Walsh administration agrees with this demand. Um, and it agrees with the demand uh, to enhance our body-worn camera policy. We agree with that. We are working through, as uh, has just gone through the Common Council for approval to have us procure um, additional body-worn cameras. We also uh, will be uh, providing the structure and the infrastructure, there's intricate processes that have to happen with body-worn cameras to ensure that they are communicating appropriately with our 911 system. That is critical. And then, of course, there has to be training to the officers so they know how to use it and when. Um, so we are in agreement with enhancing the body-worn camera um, policy with clarification. And where that clarification comes is when it comes to 
the use of the body-worn camera footage uh, for officers. While we see that um, use of body-worn camera footage, if the ultimate goal is to have accurate police reports, body-worn cameras are a tool that can do that. What is at, um, in discussion is whether or not officers should be reviewing those body-worn cameras while they are or before they are writing their reports. We will continue to review that policy. There is, um, I think, weight on both stances of that but we need to, to continue to look at it. I believe, and this is my personal opinion, that accuracy of the report is the most important thing. And if the report is what's used to further um, for um, um, legal procedures or for court procedures many times, or for accountability and um, for record of an incident, it is important that what is recorded and what is actually documented is um, in sync with each other, but we need to continue to review that policy. Um, I know that making statements that continue to review are not popular, but they're necessary. Um, not only that policy, but every policy we have, they're not worth their salt if they're not fluid and we're not constantly re-looking at them and updating them as needed. Um, Moving on to the next one was the PBA contract. We uh, are in agreement, again, with clarification. So you will find um, the PBA variations of the PBA contract on uh, the Syracuse Police Department website and our, our city page of the, our, our city blog page. You will find them both there. The clarification uh, is that there was a, a request regarding um, renegotiating parts of the, the previously voted down version of the contract. Because it is um, pending arbitration, we cannot go back in and begin to change any of those components of that. We legally can't do that. That is the clarification. Um, but the, the actual publishing of every version that we have to date is up and available to the public right now. Uh, Pass legisla legislation to strengthen the uh, Citizen Review Board and, and um, recommendations to sustain findings while maintaining a board as a, a citizen-driven accountability board. Um, the Walsh administration is uh, in agreement with that demand as well. Um, excuse me. We are in agreement with that demand as well. We have to defer that to the Common Council. And the reason is by lo local law, the Citizens Review Board was formated and created by the Common Council. Any changes to their operations has to be implemented and voted by the Common Council. So we deferred that demand to the Common Council, and I'm sure that they are um, ready and prepared to move forward as they see fit on that demand. The next one was de um, demilitarizing the police using the Ferguson Report as a guide and minimal standards. D this part of the conversation for me was very interesting on the, on the um, second. There were a lot of conversations around um, equipment that we uh, ha have in the past uh, many times have been given or purchased that is deemed as mili military in nature. We have committed to inventorying that information. We have committed to um, creating policies and procedures for the deployment of that, inf of that equipment. And we also are um, committed to uh, procurement regulations and requirements that we internally will follow for any future uh, acquisition of those type of, that type of equipment. Um, also, uh, um, a major part of that conversation was the um, use of drones in our community. Um, and I may be skipping ahead of the slides a little bit, but it all goes together. Um, we, the, the mayor will be executing at the end of the year an executive order that requires any department seeking to procure surveillance technology. Now, let's be clear. 
The mayor made this point on the second. We have no facial recognition um, equipment or technology that the city of Syracuse is using. As we continue to move forward being a smart city, we will be um, learning about new technology and the mayor will be issuing at the end, uh, end of the year an executive order that will require all departments to identify technology that could be deemed as surveillance in nature. We will be commissioning an internal and external stakeholder group that will be, whose job will be to vet whether or not it is surveillance technology. And if it is deemed that it is, it will have to be approved by the Common Council. And that is the checks and balances for us for as we move to increase our um, technological abilities as a smart city, we are protecting the privacy of our citizens at the same time. Extremely important for us. Um, did I miss anything? No. Um, redirect resources away from SPD and invest in human services and reduce the overall, overall uh, role of policing in our community. We agree to this demand uh, with clarifications. Um, it is the mayor just spent quite a bit of time talking about our financial situation. Uh, we absolutely believe, and Chief Buckner has been at the forefront of this to say that not all calls required a sworn police officer. So there are models that we um, have been given by um, individuals in our community that we have researched ourselves that we're looking at the best scenarios by which we can create a process that we identify. What are the calls that don't necessarily need a um, sworn officer to report to? Um, and so there are a variety of those options. We've laid those out as some of the items that can be identified, not an all-inclusive uh, list of, of, of calls that uh, could be done by other than a sworn police officer. And in those instances, our officers, while they have been trained to be the best at law enforcement, may not be the expert in the various areas that we need alternative means of response, whether that is um, um, domestic violence related issues, whether that is homelessness, which we do a lot of now. Um, our officers are not the first responders. Our um, uh, homeless uh, response teams, they are the first responders. And so we look to really develop that more. The um, People's Coalition also asked for us to look at a participatory budgeting process. We talked about that last year. Um, the school district has a tool that we believe is viable. We are going to be looking at how to implement that tool to create a process by which we can identify. These models that we're talking about need finances to back them up. I say all of that again, reminding all of the public, this is not an excuse, this is a reality check. We have a serious fiscal issue with the city of Syracuse that we are grappling with right now. The mayor has, I don't believe there's been one um, briefing that he has not made an appeal to our federal de delegation and Congress about the need for our federal assistance. It is critical. Without that, we are looking at serious um, operational and staffing issues as we move forward, which will affect any, any of all of this reform that we're looking to do. So I make the plea um, on behalf of the mayor, call our federal delegation, make your voice known that our communities are in need of this federal aid. The, um, we believe there's some progress going on, but until I see a check, I can't rely on that. Um, and last but not least, um, SROs and our schools. Um, the school, we again agree with this demand. However, we defer again to the um, school board who has governance over this. They are meeting next Wednesday, 4.30, in a Skype. Their business meeting is next Wednesday at 4.30. Um, and then we are meeting with uh, members of the school district two weeks from then to begin to pull apart this discussion to have a productive meeting going forward about what um, security in the schools will look like. The school district is grappling right now with what education in the school will look like this fall. So this is another layer of um, decision making that will have to happen. Mayor. Great. Thanks, Deputy Mayor. Obviously, there's a lot there, and again, a lot of work went into it. Uh, just one, um, one point of clarification on the Citizen Review Board. 
um, you know, as, as we stated in the, <clears throat> in the uh, response that you know, we, we do defer to the Common Council because the Citizen Review Board is a, um, is a product of, of Common Council legislation. Um, that being said, there, I just want to make a, a few things clear about our approach to the CRB. Uh, we welcome the partnership uh, of the CRB. We want to empower uh, the CRB, and, and I think any uh, honest broker who would, uh, who's been involved in, in the relationship between this administration, the police department, and the CRB would agree that we have made significant progress in building that relationship with them. Um, we. Uh, we and I specifically see great value in the role of the Citizen Review Board. One area uh, of uh, disagreement, um, and again, ultimately the council has authority, is on the ability for the CRB to actually implement discipline um, uh, on police officers. The, the purpose of the CRB is to, ensure, to hold all of us accountable, um, but, but the area of police officer discipline is one that we've spent a lot of time on uh, and uh, are in the process of litigating because uh, we took a proactive step of, of um, ending the existing process of, of discipline, which is, has been historically a, a subject of, uh, of negotiation that involves an arbitration process. Uh, we, move, we, we moved it out of that process uh, to, a, we believe, a much more uh, transparent process whereby the, the authority to discipline rests with the chief. Um, there is a pro there is a, the, that proposed process allows for uh, officers to um, uh, to uh, um, to object to those uh, disciplinary uh, actions and and to have a process for uh, a hearing. That hearing in our proposed process would be a uh, open hear public. Uh, hearing where people would be able to uh, to view what happens. Again, we believe that transparency is our friend, um, and we would have um, uh, a hearing officer that would um, you know that would make the final determination. So um, that's the process that we have identified. We believe that it it, it improves police discipline, improves transparency, um, but it is different than the process that has been suggested as it relates to the CRB. So I think we are very much in agreement to empower the CRB and work with them. But I just wanted to make that clarification on. Uh, on discipline because it is currently a subject of litigation between the administration and, uh, and the uh, P Police B Benevolent Association. Um, there has also been state legislation that's in being introduced to, to try to um, achieve that, um, that outcome on discipline as well.